It's another side that like wants to take more, it wants to go that one more round, because like going that one more round when you don't think you can, that's what makes all the difference in your life. You know what I mean? Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of One More Round, the Rocky Series podcast. I am your host and with me today, they're back. Katie and Kyle are back. Katie's back from her uh, weekend of debauchery. And Kyle, Kyle dropped the ball last episode. Kyle, wouldn't you tell the audience what happened, what the story was behind the scenes there? So I had to do a covert mission in Nicaragua where I had to assassinate someone. Oh, shit. I just, I usually do that on weekdays. But I had to do it on the weekend this time. That's the official story. The unofficial story is I fucked up and forgot and then went grocery shopping. And then while I was grocery shopping, got the text from Ryan saying, let's go. I'm like, Now, a real dedicated podcaster would have found a quiet corner of the grocery store (laughs) and recorded on the phone. (laughs) No, I'm very sorry about that. That is totally my fault. And I shouldn't have done that. Well, good thing there were two. Two that's co-hosts. Insane. That's right. So we want to thank Moody and Groove for coming on. We want to say thanks to those guys. They did a great job. Again, they're the hosts on the network, uh, the last of the Action Heroes Podcast Network. They host, but once a month, the Jean Claude Van Damme movie podcast called Van Damme. It. They do a great job. They're fun. They're characters in their own right, and they they're very passionate. I love their energy. I think they were also just really excited to be on the show too. You know, we've been doing this for so long. Though they came in with a lot of great energy, and I uh, really appreciate their comments. So, what were your thoughts on Moody and Gru's take on the show? Yeah, I thought they did a really good job. There's like the scene, like the bar scene, when Sly goes back into the bar, and they were talking about how he like never gets respect in this town. I was a little torn on that, just because. I feel like at one point he did, like Rocky Three, he was like super respected. And then like Rocky Balboa, people seem to really like him in Philly. It seems like Philly it portrayed in the Rocky movies is very fickle. They'll get on and off the Rocky bandwagon. Like Rocky Two, he wasn't getting any respect, of course, in the first one. Three and f- four, Philly doesn't exist, basically. Not to pick at them. That's like my only thing. Otherwise, no, they, that's were, fine. they were I mean, like, we disagreed. Un- we, I disagree yeah. with them on things on the show. It's okay that that's the whole point. We we disagree with each other. So I was just curious, yeah, what you agreed yeah. or disagreed with. Yeah. No, they were cool. No, they were really yeah. good. I like their like accents. They sound east. They're from like New Jersey or something like that. I don't know. Where I think from, they're New York. I know there's like a New York, New Jersey thing. Forgive my ignorance. I'm I'm not anywhere near that area of the world. So we're Canadian. I, I get our Canadian accents mixed up, even up here in our own country. So hey, I noticed it now. It's funny. I'm like, oh, Western. They're Canadian, like yeah. East Coast Canadian. Yeah. 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 The further west you go, the more intelligent you become. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, it sounds that, that way. <laughs> that's really wrong because people in Alberta are dumb as fuck and we're pretty far west. So. That, well, that's true. You go west all the way to where I, where I am on Vancouver Island. That's where the best and the brightest are. Yeah. No, I'm just teasing. Okay. Of course, we're all just equally as amazing no matter where we go. Nobody is different. Okay. Uh, Katie, uh, what did you think of the show? It was very different. Well, first of all, it was three dudes instead of it was just a very different dynamic and that can be a nice refreshing little change from time to time. I concur. I think, you know, they clearly know Rocky and, you know, so they brought that knowledge and fandom with them. So I I liked it. And on the, the Philly thing and Rocky feeling and it being maybe fickle, I wonder if it's just that Sly, because you know how we've talked about Rocky is Sly, like the movies right. replicate mm-hmm. his, what what he's going through with life. Is Philly a stand-in for Hollywood? Mm. Like how he mm. feels slighted? Maybe, yeah. I, I think I, that's I never pretty possible. That. I think that's pretty possible. I, honestly, the more I look into the Rocky films and the more I understand about his world and the world of boxing and stuff, pretty much everything is lifted from somewhere else. Mm. And that's not an insult to Sly and stuff. I think it's totally fine to incorporate the real world into things, especially if it's like your own personal experience. Yeah, I'm trying to think like Rocky 2. It's not like he was under a lot of pressure to do Rocky 2, was he? I don't know. 
Rocky Five could have been a time where he was falling out. Like, what other films did he have going on in 1990 or 89 or whatever? The Tango and Cash was 89. And then yeah. right after was Rocky Five. I like think Oscar was, was around 90. It was he was really trying to change. Like, he was trying to shed his Rocky and Rambo at that time. He was like, I'm going to try to be a serious actor. It's hard for me to take Sly seriously outside of like Rocky and Rambo type roles. And it's not even that he's bad at acting. It's I think it's like you're almost kind of a victim of your own success in that you have me so convinced mm-hmm. about the Rocky character. And you did such a good job with the Rocky character. I have such a difficult time seeing you, you being Sly, outside of Rocky. I feel like Rambo is a different person, but it's kind of like... 100% agree. And I think it's a big compliment to him. I mean, he is known for two of the most iconic characters in film history. Two, not one, two. I saw actually a conversation between uh, Rain Wilson, who plays Dwight Schrute uh, in The Office, and Brian Cranston. And they were both basically talking about the same thing, saying that, like, they did these epic roles where you will know, like, you see Rain Wilson, you see Dwight Schrute. Mm -hmm. That permeates everything he does. Anything he's in, you're going to think of Dwight which is a testament to how well you did as that character, how memorable and beloved that character is. And same with Brian Cranston in Breaking Bad. I remember when I first saw Breaking Bad, I had a hard time taking him seriously because I thought of him as Hal, like the dad on Malcolm in the Middle. But now it's like if I watch an old Malcolm in the Middle, it's weird to see him like that because I like so associated him as Heisenberg for Breaking Bad that I think it's a similar phenomenon with Sly too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. For whatever reason, Sly seems to get more flack for the very thing that you just spoke about. Rain Wilson, Brian Cranston, great examples of very beloved shows, TV shows, and so are the Rocky Rambo films. But it's odd that Sly gets crapped on for being that same Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, Han Solo, two very iconic characters. And I still see Harrison Ford kind of as those characters, but playing Harrison Ford ish in other films. I love him. But he's still just Harrison Ford, but he doesn't get the same flack. I don't know why. It's always tossed on Sly. How dare Sly be successful in two roles? And how dare he try to branch out? It's just odd that he gets the criticism, but no other actor seems to get the same type of typecasting criticism that he seems to get. But that's just me being a little bit, uh, I would say defensive, but I admit, I get, I just want fair treatment. If Sly is getting that, so should Brian Cranston. People should criticize him for being so good at being Walter White. But they, they don't. They praise him. And then they just say, good job of doing other films. And speaking of, Kyle, you got to watch Tulsa King. You might be surprised. If you watch Tulsa King, it's a pretty short series. Like, it's not very long. It's like nine, ten episodes a season. But he's still very slyish, but it, he's definitely playing a different type. Like, he's neither Rambo nor Rocky. He's neither good nor bad. He's more complicated, more nuanced. The slyisms are certainly there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, like, I've yeah, seen yeah. some clips from Tulsa King. Okay. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way for whatever oh. reason. And, and oh, I can't wow. even put my finger on why. So I saw a scene of him in the bar talking to some cowboy guy, talking about like his cowboy boots. And then he talked about my old man's really and he has these boots. And another scene where he's like talking to a judge and he wants to yeah. represent himself. You know, I have a lot of experience in criminal history. Like just trying to be a badass that kind of one ups one ups people. That's kind of what I, the impression that I got. I don't know. Like I, I'm not, I don't know if I'm in the mood for that necessarily, but it could be good. I'll probably end up watching it eventually. I have a hard time being convinced on good shows. Like Breaking Bad, it took a lot of persuasion to get me to watch Breaking Bad. I'm kind of more skeptical of new shows. Like sure. it's a high barrier to entry for me. So I'm I'm like, similar, except like I would never, well, maybe because I do like mobster stuff. I but do if, too, yeah. If Sly but, weren't in this, I don't know if I would have watched no, it. The draw, of course, the draw is an actor. That, that, that goes yeah. without saying. Very few shows... I, I don't know how many shows I watch where I'm watching strictly on the concept. Now, it does happen. Mm-hmm. But if I know an actor, kind of know what they've brought to certain other shows that I've enjoyed before, it just it's just easier to get into. I mean, Breaking Bad was one. It's, again, another example of I didn't know Brian Cranston. I never watched him. I knew he was the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. I never saw one episode of it. I never saw Same. the series. So you I went saw show, one I, episode of Malcolm in the Middle? Wow. I have now. Because my kids and I, we all watched it as a family. So we watched the series together. So I, could, I did it weirdly. I did Walter White first. He did a great job of, of both characters. But the point is, I went to that show blind, didn't know any actors. But it's a rarity that a show will 
drum and i think i went in because people were talking about it i, I kind of came in johnny come lately season two or three but i started watching the beginning caught up so i recommend tulsa king if you haven't seen it it's a great mob show it's comedy drama family dynamics um complicated characters short episodes 35 40 minutes and uh yeah it's it's easy to swallow my wife watches it with me and she's enjoying it too she's not necessarily a huge sly fan if she wasn't married to me she probably wouldn't watch the show but she's watching with me and she's enjoying the show so you don't have to be a mob fan sly fan or any kind of if you just it's good tv it's it's decent to you easy to swallow palpable it doesn't offend in that sense we got a couple emails there katie we have one from eccentric views channel on youtube it's almost impossible for the writers, Sly, to think of a plausible plot for the Balboas to lose all of their money and go back to old school Philly. That's why I think they should have ended it with Rocky IV. Could you imagine Rocky V without the money loss? How would Rocky Balboa and Creed films look? I saw the work print in 2016, and it's great to see the side-by-side -side comparisons. You've done great, Ryan. I think the line where Rocky said, I don't want to go down in the ring was definitely an outtake or blooper. You can see he was forgetting his line and repeated himself. Another great episode. These two new guests, Moody and Gru, were very passionate. I liked them. I do miss Kyle and Katie, though. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I'm glad um, our positions aren't in danger. <laughs> it's it's still in the air. I don't know. I don't know. It depends how confrontational you guys are with me today. We'll see. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't uh, want yes men. Come on. No, man. I don't. No, I don't. No, I, every now and then it would be not, it would be nice, but <laughs> not every sentence. No, I did want to ask you guys your opinion on something which eccentric views brought up in that uh, comment there, and I wanted to hear your thoughts because you heard the episode, I presume, and we played the work print scene where Sly playing Rocky made that line and i was trying to tell the guys they weren't quite understanding me again i don't know if it's me i sometimes i feel like it's really making sense in my head and i'm saying it out loud I was like, why aren't people understanding that's communication one-on-one -on -one, i know but i was trying to say that the character was saying the opposite that i think sly and that's what essential views is agreeing with me that i think sly said the line wrong I think he repeated the line in that take to say it right but he said it wrong twice because he said a champion boxer shouldn't end his career with a doctor's note. Mm -hmm. He should end his career on the battlefield, i.e. the ring. He said he's supposed to end with his dignity, yes, but it was unclear because he says a champion isn't supposed to end it in the ring. That's what he said in that scene. Or so go down I, in the ring. Or go down in the ring. or Whatever it was, yeah. So am I overthinking it or do you agree that it was a flubbed delivery or a weird line? Isn't that where all champions want to end their career? Win or lose, you you do it in the ring on the battlefield. I don't know. Ooh, I know what you're talking about, and I could feel your frustration because I know I knew what you meant, Ryan. Okay. He did say it wrong. Like the way he said it was incorrect. And that's okay. what you were trying to point out. You're like, I, I get what he's trying to get at, but that's not what he said. So wasn't he wanting to say that he should end the ring? The, not in a doctor's office. Like that's what he wanted as a boss. Yes. But I okay. think that they were also right in that either two things that he meant they were already correcting what he said like understanding what he meant by it sure <laughs> or yeah you don't want to go down in the ring you want to retire on top meaning you want to win in the ring not go down well nobody wants to lose in the ring but he didn't say he even didn't say that that's the i know thing. i know that yeah, i'm just totally saying i think that you were both clear. I think you were both right in that, that they were interpreting it either that way or just correcting what he said, like they knew what sure. he meant. Yeah. And you were right because that's not what he said. He said it wrong. Yeah. He said it wrong. Yeah, I think in the real world, we saw on film a flubbed line. It's either a flubbed line or shitty writing. Rocky Marciano, who was on Rocky Balboa's wall in his apartment, mm -hmm. left fighting without a loss. He did not lose his championship in the ring. There is a precedent for Rocky mm -hmm. not ending it in the ring. The, he yeah, didn't yeah. have a doctor's note either. He just stopped fighting. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I would do. If I had an awesome record, the last time I won, I'd be like, I'm done now. I'm not going to lose in the ring either. At any rate, I wanted to bring up something yeah. that he said. They should have ended it with Rocky Four. Could you imagine Rocky Five without the money loss? What about Balboa? What about the Cream films? Right. Those wouldn't have happened. Yeah. If we ended it with Four, that would have... You don't know what you don't know. Who knows? But there wouldn't have been the appetite to correct it if we ended it with four. You go out on a well, high yeah, note. We talked about that. There wouldn't have been a Rocky Balboa. Sly wouldn't have been yeah. like, I got to fix this mistake. So, yeah, and then no creeds either. Imagine if you had a wealthy Rocky in 2006, 
Like, if he had not lost his money. Saying that he has, like, a beast in the basement he has to, to conquer and then goes back to fight Mason Dixon. No one would watch that shit. I don't think he would make it to the theaters, to be honest. You have to go back. To- I like that he went back to the old neighborhood. The idea of Rocky living in this palatial mansion and being, like, some rich guy is not him. Yeah, you know, I don't like to see Rocky down and out where he's, like, poor and struggling. But, like, when Rocky owned that restaurant and he seemed to be kind of doing okay for himself, but he wasn't super rich and people respected and liked him and he was, like, kind of a celebrity, to me, I'm like, that seems like Rocky. Like, that's kind of the familiar Rocky that I know. Also, like, his mannerisms and just the way he spoke in Rocky Balboa was kind of an ode to the old Rocky, where it's, like, Rocky four Rocky and Rocky three Rocky wasn't really the Rocky personality we fell in love with and Rocky wanted to. I actually don't like three and four for that reason. They're exciting films. He's fighting exciting fighters and like, it's like eighties, just intensity. But I really think that Rocky five and Rocky Balboa kind of brought us back into like a better reality. In my opinion, we got a nice comment here from Jared from the podcast. What is your podcast again? Something about spacing and hyper hyperspacing podcasting. He said this, he goes, uh, Rocky always needs a mountain to climb. I agree, Jared. It's not Rocky who needs him. Always needs a mountain to climb. It's, it's people in general. If you don't have challenges in your life to overcome on some level, you're going to be stagnant, and I don't think you're going to be happy. I'm not saying you sh- your life has to be super stressful and you're struggling your whole life, but having some kind of challenge to overcome, or like that's the only way you grow as a person, right? Agreed. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Comfort zone is comfortable, but you don't grow there. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm the same height I now than I was in <laughs> 11th grade. I'm, 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 I'm shorter. I'm shorter. Yeah. Actually, same. I am. You know, it's yeah. funny you guys say that. I am actually, I'm shorter. I was, it, I'm that age now where I'm shorter than I was when I was 23. I'm yeah. younger than you and I'm shorter than I was. I did the physical before I went, when I was 19, I had a physical and they measured my height and I'm like about half an inch shorter now than I was before then. Your spine compresses and gravity's undefeated. <laughs> Yeah, other things have got shorter on me too, which I don't really appreciate. All right, uh, Katie. <laughs> Does that happen? Okay, we're not going to talk about that kind of thing. We have Next another email yeah, from yeah. Doug Greenberg from the Rocky Minute podcast fame. <laughs> <laughs> did he write that or did you? No, I wrote, I wrote the fame part. <laughs> the guy's a bum. He's got to write some, he's got to record some more episodes. He's doing it. He's coming. He's doing it. But he, <laughs> wait, long story short, for anyone's tracking who happens to listen to this show, who knows Doug Greenberg from the Rocky Minute, Basically, he lost all of his files. Long story short, computer corruption, divorce, remarriage, baby, time. Then on top of that, COVID. And then and then he lost the files of what he did record or had recorded. It got corrupted or something. So he's just going to maybe reset the clock. He's going to re-record is what I'm saying. So it's going to happen. It's going to be when his life settles down. It's not over yet. It's nothing's over. <laughs> he says, Ryan, Katie, and Kyle, in the doctor's office scene, when Rocky argues his case for wanting to go out with dignity in the ring... I think Adrian's response should have been like Apollo did. She oh, have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <been> rough. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she could have argued that Apollo's death in the ring left Marianne and his kids without a husband and a father. Number yeah. one. Yeah, for real. Number one, that would have ended Rocky's argument immediately. Knowing Rocky, he'd be like, yeah, but I'm better. I, I'd i win. I would have. I beat him. I beat Drago. He's got the best protection that any character can have. He's got plot armor. <laughs> plot plot armor. armor. He just tells the agent, hey, I'm fine. I'm the, I'm the main character. <laughs> Doug goes on to say, number two, it would have provided a stronger connection to Rocky IV. Until the Creed movies came along, I always felt that Rocky IV existed in a kind of alternate universe. A conversation about Apollo in this moment would have been a great tribute to his character and Rocky IV. Each film in some way almost feels that way. Maybe that was by design, like almost like a... Like some of the earlier James Bond films, and what I liked about the Daniel geeking out here, what I liked about the Daniel Craig James Bond films, and then the later Mission Impossible films, was that they had storyline arcs that connected. It wasn't just standalone adventures per se. There's adventures within the film, yes, you know the stunt pieces and stuff and the action sequences, but there's a storyline arc. Earlier James Bond films was kind of like, hey, we're doing this story, we're doing this story. Now it's a different actor, but the Daniel Craig and then the Tom Cruise movies. You have this story arc that you get invested in more. And I kind of wish that they do a bit of that in the, these films, but they don't do it enough. It's like, make up your mind. Is this truly the life of one man, you know, over four decades? Because Rocky Four exists in this weird bubble. Like, did, did anything really happen in part three? Or then even in part five where it's like, I fought Drago, remember two weeks ago? And it's just, it yeah. almost seems like, like, don't forget these things. Apollo's dead. Was Apollo's name mentioned in Rocky Five? 
That's a good question. We'll have to look out you know, for it. I can't say that definitively because I don't have like a photographic memory or anything. But what Doug is actually saying there, that's a good moment to, to tie yeah. in the fourth film. So, uh, hey, Rocky says, Adrian, just like your friend died in the ring, like this is where we're headed. That's a real conversation you would have had. That could have been real dialogue. Like, Rocky, you're saying this, but your best friend ended his life in the ring, and I can't watch you do that. It's interesting. Have you guys seen Cinderella Man? Mm-hmm. Yes. James Braddock, he's like an aging fighter, kind of makes a later in life comeback during the Depression where he's like basically on the verge of being homeless. And he gets this chance to fight Max Bear, the champion. And Max Bear had killed two men in the ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they talked about one of the guys he killed who didn't die right away. They said that his next fight, one little nothing jab killed him because he was just just barely uh, hanging on, like whatever in his brain. And then one little hit killed him. And he didn't care, right? He just fought anyways because he's like, I'm doing this for my family. That's the risk I'm going to take. And I feel like that's a mentality a lot of men have. That's honestly would have been my mentality if I was in Rocky's shoes. I'm going to take the risk because this is who I am. I provide. I am a fighter. I'm not going to watch my family like live in poverty. I'd rather get killed in the ring than do that, which I'm not saying is the correct line of thinking. Like my ego and like just kind of that testosterone part of you thinks that way. Well, it could have also given us the opportunity to hear for the third time. Hey, I never asked you to stop being a woman. (laughs) Don't ask me to stop being a man. I love it. Okay. So Jared, the hyperspace podcasting of the 25th century. I, so I, 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 I just assume Jared is messaging us from the 25th century. Yeah, I think he like, is. Like they would have that technology in the 25th century to, you know, have fourth dimensional internet where you could talk to people in the past. But yes, Apollo Creed is mentioned in Rocky Five technically because he says, I've been following you since your first fight with Apollo Creed. Oh, and then okay. also, also, there's like pictures of Apollo too. Now that I think about it, like in the sun's room and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. he kind of does like that's true. That's dad true. Sh- shrine. So yeah, I'm gonna have to walk back my comment there. Uh, okay, no, that's true. I forgot about that. That Tommy brings these are the shorts you wore for. You know, we'll talk yeah. about that scene later when we get to it. Are these really the shorts? <laughs> the colors? The shorts? The same ones? The blood stains and everything on them. So that's it from Doug, right? There's no more on that one. He he closes with great work oh. as always, my friends. Oh, thanks, Doug. Thank you. You you guys did the scene in the episode last episode where was it the one where, where Mickey's talking about Rocky and you know his reason to live and stuff? That's happening right now. We're doing that today. Okay. I want to share something from real life where that came. You want to show up before the scene to compare or after? Is it the uh, Cosimoto guy or whatever? Yeah, Customato. Customato, sorry. Yeah. Um, Let's do Quasimodo. <laughs> Quasimodo. <laughs> I think we should show the Rocky one first, and then we'll show the Chris okay. one after. And before we start that clip, I just want to ask this question to you guys. There was a huge deleted scene last episode with the pancake story with uh, Rocky. In the, did you guys catch that in the Andes bar where Rocky talks about the pancake that he made? And he slipped on it. Am I talking on my butt here? Well, I remember uh, hearing like he was drunk in the bar, but I don't know why I don't remember pancake. The audio was hard to hear. That's why the title of that episode was called Rocky Tells a Pancake Story. <laughs> if you don't remember, if you didn't hear it, that's fine. I'm not trying to call you out. I'm just saying there's a big deleted scene. And yeah, Jared, I agree. Terrible scene. So in that scene, Rocky talks to Andy's bar. It's just before he comes out and goes, oh, how you doing, Mick? Two minute scene where he tells a pancake story. Oh, it was pancakes. And I was flipping the pancakes. And there was butter on the ground. And I slipped on the butter. I fell down. Uh, and then remember that? And then he goes, it was the first time that boxing champion was knocked out by his own pancake mix that oh my god that is awful that was the scene i shared on the episode maybe you're doing laundry or dishes you kind of blocked it out but i i did the listen whole to it i did listen to it but yeah sometimes my brain is elsewhere i mean that's what he was saying time. and the audio is poor i had to listen to it a couple of times that's what he was saying so he told the pancake story and then he talks to andy and andy's like what are you doing here and he says well i just you know my legs are weak i can't you know talk about that how it's his legs are shot and things like that that it's not about his brain he doesn't want to talk about his brain being shot Anyways, that was that scene. My question was, would you guys see that scene? But now I can't really get an answer from you. Well, (laughs) no, your summary of it, that does sound awful. And I'm glad it wasn't in it. I didn't like Rocky being drunk. And I just felt really sorry for Rocky. That was the design of the scene. Yeah, That was the the design was to make you feel like this is pathetic. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the uh, Michael Bolton song played afterwards. Did you catch that? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting thing is, 
the dream or the memory sequence of Rocky with Mickey, the workers print no change. They knew what they had. Oh, okay. So they're calling at him right now as he's leaving. You can hear them. So that's what's just happened in the original cut is he's just done the pancake story. And they're asking them, how come he lost everything? What happened to this guy? And that's it's still in the original where he looks back at them. Kind of like, who are you guys? But we don't see in this cut. You know, we kind of shit on Rocky just a little bit ago with its poor writing and stuff like that um, and plot holes. This is a nice touch. Like this is calling back to prior movies with the. Mm-hmm. train and this bar like these are places mm-hmm. we've seen and on the shot is familiar to us i like it yeah that is a different bar it's, it's a different it's... name but then andy's still owning it does it say andy's bar i think it does say andy's bar Weird. it's the same bar they just changed the name right yeah. from lucky seven to andy's it's a fan fiction here he worked at the lucky tavern and then the owner died or and then andy bought the bar out yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna contest that oh okay because Andy says, I run a business. I don't have to take no shots. So he wouldn't say that if he worked. He could be him. running a business, not his business. He he always owned it. I wonder if it okay. was, he just at some point changed it up. To, or to a partnership changed. He could have had a partner. When the partner left, he changed it to Andy's. <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the, I love the minutia. It's so great. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, P.S. Ryan, when you were saying. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know why this like stuck with me because it is on topic sort of about callbacks when the son says something about your, Oh, do you look like Rocky raccoon? And he's like, you should have seen the other guy's face or mm-hmm. the other guy's knuckles, knuckles or something. And right. you, you had opined that it would have been better if he said yeah. Drago. And yeah. I think they didn't because it's a saying, Oh, if you think I look bad, you should see the other right. guy. That's right. That's always said when someone's beat up from a fight. We yeah. have to assume the other guy also got a worse beaten too. Yeah. I love that, but it's the other guy's knuckles. That's so hilarious, right? Like that's he rockified it. Yeah, that's like right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that was clever. You know, now that I think about it, it's just Rocky screwing up the saying, probably. Uh huh. But I always thought that was kind of like a kind of self-deprecating joke. Like you think I, I look bad. You should have seen the other guy's knuckles. Is acknowledging that he got beat up. When you said you should have seen the other guy, to me, that's really pathetic. Like someone's trying to save face. That's kind of what it is. It's like I might be beaten up, but so is the other guy. Like it's not just me, the other guy. Yeah. But I like that. Was like, you should have seen the other guy's knuckles. Like that's funny. Like that's good. It's more mm-hmm. self-deprecating. Yeah. Yeah. Which is typical of Rocky. Yeah. How did they blow it all? Did you get it? Now, of course, in the uh, the uh, workers' print. We actually see Rocky talking to them. There's a whole scene of him talking to them. Like, yeah. I've traveled the world. I was champion of the world. What'd you guys ever do? He doesn't say it there. He just walks away a little bit more. Why do you think he smokes again? That, well, he smoked right up to uh, training for Apollo. So it's just a habit he went back to. In the timeline of things, what, it's only nine years since he stopped smoking. So That's a long time. Stress. I've never been a smoker, but I would assume from what I know about smokers, you know, when you stress, you digress. So he's going back to something that's comfortable. Metaphor of like, I've given up. It's the idea that I don't care about my health. That's what I think is showcasing. Mm. His health doesn't matter. Who cares the, now? Maybe the film implies that he's reverting back to his old self. You see that through this clothing, like he's wearing. He's like Rocky. Where are you wearing those old clothes? Like you know when, like he, um, he's like if you live in a place long enough, you become that place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he's going back to that place, and he also says, "Did we ever leave?" In his mind, living in a mansion and being a champion and stuff was really a blip from the longer narrative he spent most of his life in that neighborhood there was a few years where he was on top of the world but now he's back in his mind i'm in this place i am this place and in this place we dress like this in this place we smoke in this place we get drunk and go to bars well it's also the old you know, you can leave the trail park but the trail park doesn't leave you and, when they and were I- cheap then they're like 12 bucks now so they're priced still like under two dollars at this time Oh, cigarette packs? Yeah, they were yeah. really cheap back in the day. They were cheap back in the day. Yeah. They're like a buck a cigarette now almost, aren't they? Or something yeah. Like that? Uh, yeah. We were talking, remember Katie, when we were, when I was in Denver, we were talking about the price of cigarettes? Because mm-hmm. like in Canada, it's like in Canadian dollars, it's like over 20 bucks for a pack. Oh, I can't believe that. That, that alone is enough for yeah. me to quit. 
I couldn't. Yeah. I'm so cheap. I'm so cheap. I'd quit just. Or I'd yeah. make my own. I'd grow my own. <laughs> make <somehow>. my <laughs> own. <laughs> so I would just probably make my own tobacco. <laughs> You'd have to grow tobacco. <laughs> I would figure out something. I don't know. Or at least roll my own. Maybe save a couple bucks rolling them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of money and it's like, smoking's the worst. Don't smoke, kids. That's a PSA yeah. from our podcast. It gives you garbage breath. Nobody likes garbage. <laughs> That's a great moment there. And we crap on this film. I know we, I see like the general Rocky fans, but this, that's a great shot there. I love that shot of him standing there in the street with the Mickey's gym over his right shoulder. It's a great shot. It's a great angle yeah. shot, kind of coming down on the street, looking up like that. I like that. Is that and John G? Whole, that's old that John Rocky? G. That's John G, I think. Yeah. And, and it's just so sad watching this neighborhood. It was not a nice neighborhood in 1975. No. But it was a lot nicer. Yeah, now it's blight, total urban Yeah, it looks like shit. It's in deep decline, right? So it's not even like you're going back to your old Close neighborhood. You're going back to like a worse version of your old neighborhood. Uh, Donald brings up this. Uh, that's terrible, Donald. He says, I got my phone stolen outside Mick's gym. It's a crap hole. <laughs> Wait, sorry, <laughs> Donald. I have a question. When you say you had your phone stolen, were you robbed? Or did somebody get pickpocketed or something? Because to me, that's like both are bad, but it's like getting getting robbed is like, I know this word's overused now, but like traumatic. That's like a traumatic experience to get robbed. And so, Well, robbery is a violent crime. It's like one of, you know. Yeah, like if someone mugged yeah. you, that's fucked up. Yeah. Sucks. Yeah, he's robbed. Oh, boy. Man, that sucks the story, man. Maybe your phone's in the gym here somewhere. I mean, Rocky can look for it. Remember when Rocky told Mickey in the first film, when he showed him the picture, he goes, oh, you didn't take very good care of your picture. He could say that about the gym now. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> he didn't, uh, didn't I was, it's I was Rocky's waiting. fault. It's Rocky's fault. I know. It's, it, a it's, a, it's a joke. I was waiting to comment on this, actually. People are pissed off at Rocky, like people shitting on him in the bar and stuff like that. And I think part of it is resentment. Because as soon as Rocky got any money, he fucked right off. Sorry, I'm good for editing. He left right away. <laughs> and there's no evidence whatsoever that Rocky invested in that community at all. And maybe he felt like he didn't owe them because no one liked him there, gave him a chance, and that's fair enough. But that gym is where he got started. I'm astounded. He could have paid to have someone run that gym. He could have stopped into that gym. He could have made that part of his life. Interesting point. That I'm he... actually surprised he didn't. Yeah, good point. Yeah. I never considered that. A month ago, he had you know access to at least $30 million, let's just say. At oh, least. yeah. The fact that he didn't do any kind of like take care of the mortgage of the place, buy some new equipment, turn it into some youth group place. Youth, yeah, place. like a like our community. He like, raised money for the youth community yeah. in part three. Like, why didn't he? Yeah, it's a great and point. And it's willed to, guy... it's willed. After Mickey's death, it just seems this is again, this is a plot hole. hole. There's a a huge plot plot hole. hole. That Rocky, with his love of Mick, treat him as a Mick, Mick. You know, the whole fact that Mick dies in his arms. Forget about the gym, Mick. I'm going to cry over your corpse and then forget about your gym. It could be two things. One, just a plot hole. Or if you want to look at it, the universe of Rocky, his inability sometimes to see outside of himself. Like it's not a selfish thing, he just doesn't see things. He might not even thought of it. I don't but know. Like at Mickey's funeral, he would have learned that it was willed to his son. Yeah, he would have been told that. Although probably they told that count and guy who screwed him. <laughs> but he must have wondered what's happening to the gym. Because that gym mm-hmm. was operating in Rocky Three. We know that because he says, hey, let's get back to the old gym and get some blood and sweat and tears. Which tells you that the old gym was not in this condition. Mickey was at least making sure that gym was operating. In the early 80s. Well, even so, after he died, because Apollo comes to the gym to offer to train Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. And the gym's in, in decent shape. If the Balboas don't pay their taxes <laughs> or their mortgage, they're not going to take care of Mickey's gym. Okay. Let's just be clear here. Well, actually, I don't know about that because like, the accountant pays the mortgage, but it, it's a matter of just questioning things. What's going on at the gym? If you had this gym, you might visit it occasionally. You, you might have someone that you trust run that gym. You had to get involved a little bit. He would have had to have hired somebody to manage it. If Mickey's not yeah. there, no one is. He could have said, well, I thought the accountant hired someone to manage it. And I guess they didn't. 
But I mean, like, he would have set up a charity in Mickey's name. It, it, it this is a plot hole. Yeah. Is so in real life, like this is somewhat based on Joe Frazier's life, as I said, where Joe Frazier lived in an apartment on top of a gym just like this. He ran this gym in Philly, and it mostly had like youth getting kids off the street or whatever. And mm-hmm. he, he made like a meager living doing that. It's bullshit that this gym is dumb. I never consider it. It's funny. After all these years, the idea of this gym is destroyed in a horrible state that no one took care of it within the Rocky camp. In a real world, if this universe was a real universe, it would have been taken care of. Adrian and or Rocky would have thought, hey, we should probably take care of the very thing you know, your father figures enterprise. You know, mm-hmm. it, it is funny that they had to make it willed to Robert to fit the plot. Sure. Because otherwise, this gym would have been seized with all with all the other assets, right? If it oh, was good point. Oh, good right. point, Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> they did think of that. They, I they thought just of that. Surprising. <laughs> surprising. But then why did Mickey will it to Robert? It's not like Mickey and Robert were close at all. At least that you could. Well, see. you could uh, you could argue just to give in case there was a falling out between father and son. Mickey saw that Rocky maybe wasn't the greatest. Or maybe dad. Mickey yeah. knew Rocky would do, this would happen eventually. <laughs> He's like, this yeah. guy, he's going to lose all his money. <laughs> I've seen what he does with his taxes. Yeah, he's terrible. He knows Rocky's yeah, nose. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> now that we've crapped over the plot of the gym, let's get to, the, <laughs> let's get to one of the best scenes the of the, pretty in the scene. franchise. The, one of the best scenes of the franchise is in one of the worst films of the franchise, considered by fans anyways, but uh, most maligned. But this scene, as we know, so he's going up. He takes a couple. Of, he can't help himself. He's got to take a couple swings to the bag. Oh, I want to tell you one of the deleted scenes coming up. If we get to it this episode, we might not get to this episode. But if you want to, it's a long one. Shirtless Sly, Katie. A shirtless Sly. Have you seen the deleted uh, scene? The deleted scene? Oh, you don't mean this scene? No, no. I'm just saying it's coming up. There's a shirtless Sly for like a whole scene. I am unfamiliar with the deleted scene that you're talking about. Yeah, it's insane. I only know the when, you know, he's in the ring with Mickey. I see what you're saying. No, like we're seeing it's full on chess. You see everything. He's talking to Adrian. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's he's, one of the problems with Rocky Five. He's Rocky got a great five, vibe. Show me so it. I, well, if we get to it, we, we might not. Shower. Get... Like, how much more do you want? <laughs> That's it, though. That was it. From then on, he's wearing weird crop T-shirts that aren't even. Even fitting. the shower, he, you didn't really see him. See him. It was just this yeah. side silhouette. Yeah, he looks good. The scene that comes up, he looks really good. It is. Yeah, you'll see. Dipper's glove. <laughs> yeah. It's on Skid Row. I was wondering if he puts his hand in there. There's like a mouse, a dead mouse in there. So it probably is like mouse poop or something in there, though. <laughs> Slip to Jay. Slip to Jay. Slip the jab! That's right. That's it. Hey, I didn't hear no bell. Okay. All right, that's right. Slip the jab. That's it. Mentalize. See that bum in front of you. You see yourself doing right, and you do right. I love that his uh, exhaustion breath. He was actually channeling Drago there at the same sound that Drago made when he was on that running yeah. machine. <laughs> um, Is the word "mentalize" different? That's another Mickeyism where you know, like the Bible says, you got to get yourself some motivation or whatever. This is this is another one of his uh, combo words that don't really exist. No, nobody. I mean, says but it mentalize. was it in the original. Oh, this is the original cut. Oh, is it? I th- this was the work print. Okay. Oh, the work print's garbage audio. You go, you'll, you'll know the work. It hasn't okay, been that long. Sorry, yeah. I don't. I just for some reason don't recall him saying that. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty. That's very pretty. Time. Ah, oh, come here, Rock. My God, you're ready, ain't you? That Apollo won't know what hit him. You're gonna roll over him like a bulldozer, an Italian bulldozer. Are we all in agreement? This sequence, if Rocky's remembering a true event that happened to him and Mickey, which we have to assume did, because he gets the cuff link, this was pre-Super Fight 2. Like, this was the training for the second fight, not the first. 
I've argued in the previous podcast, it was before the first, I've begrudgingly, begrudgingly accepted that it's before the second fight, but I don't like it. Well, you don't have I to think, like it. I, I think there's some elements of, of what Mickey says that don't make sense. That's right. That there, for the for be it, being it that it's the second fight, but I think it is before the second fight. They're too tender because Rocky says at the end of the scene, I love you too, Mick. I love you too, Mick. He yeah. did not say that the Mick in the first fight. Yeah, it, the part that bothers me is it says Apollo won't know what hit him. And that really, to me, feels like more of a, something you'd say before the first fight. Don't forget about the tricks, the, the change of style. Yes, that's what convinced me, actually. Okay. The, right. the switching thing, the change of style is what finally got me over to the Rocky Two camp there. But I was diehard. It was before the first fight, and everyone was saying it's before the second. That it was hard for me to swallow that. It's very hard on my, my intelligence to handle that I was wrong about that. <laughs> I'm not certain. I think I need to con- like let the sure. scene play out. Sure. I'm not certain. Okay. All right. You know, kid, I know how you feel about this fight that's coming up. Because I, I was young once, too. And I tell you something. Well, if he wasn't here, he, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that you're here and doing as well as you're doing gives me, what do you call it, a motivation? Huh? There's another word, yeah, motivation. I love it. I love yeah. that. Oh, God, Mickey it's, looks old. Well, <laughs> I think he's 81 or 2 here. I think he's 80-something. He's not 85, but I think he's between 81 and 83 here. But yeah. It's odd because he's only like sly right now, seventy nine. Mm-hmm. People insane. aged different back then, man. <laughs> people, people died earlier. Mm-hmm. People died earlier. Well, life was rougher, man. We're soft. I know, especially for a pug like him. I love how he still got the he still got the uh, the toque on the <laughs> snow cap on. <laughs> oh, you know, I think the reason that we determined I'll still let the scene play out, but I think the reason we determined it was after before the second yeah. fight is because. We don't see Rocky wearing the necklace until Rocky three. We see Apollo wear the cufflink in part two. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, that's hilarious. I love it. I love this universe. It's the best universe. <laughs> Time doesn't mean anything. All right. To stay alive. Because I think that people die sometimes when they don't want to live no more. Nature's smarter than people think. And nature is smarter than people think. Little by little, we lose our friends. We lose everything. We keep losing and losing till we say, you know, oh, what the hell am I living around here for? I got no reason to go on. Of course, we know Sly wrote this, right? He's the author. And what I find amazing is, is in Creed, the first film, we get it again. When he's talking to Adonis, he says, oh, little back there. When he said he wasn't going to take the cancer treatment. He doesn't have any reason to go on. And yeah, so this yeah. this dialogue that Mickey's saying to Rocky, Rocky says to Adonis, but kind of the opposite. Like, I, unlike Mickey, I am dying. I have this cancer. I don't have any reason to go on. Everything I love is back there behind me. And so when he says that, this is what he's saying here. He's saying, yeah, I agree with Mickey, but at the same time, I don't have a reason to go on. And that's what Adonis gets mad. What do you mean? Aren't we family? Like, I should be a reason to go on. Mm-hmm. But to reinvestigate the same mantra or thinking is, and I, I think it's great to slide connected with the two, I think. Mm-hmm. But with you, kid, boy, I got a reason to go on. And I'm going to stay alive. And I will watch you make good. And I'll never leave you. And I'll never leave you until that happens. Because when I leave you, you'll not only know how to fight, you'll be able to take care of yourself outside the ring, too. Is that okay? It's okay. Okay. Now I got a little gift for you. This is the your, uh, your quasi or Coach Quasimodo. I know this is something he says in particular in his interview about Tyson, right? Where he's like trying to train Tyson to be smart outside the ring as well within the ring. Is I don't know if he says it in the clip I have, but. Oh, okay. Can I show you? No, yeah, no, we'll finish this. Okay. We'll, I think we might end it with your clip because I'll see what the next okay. scene is. I think there is a deleted scene. Maybe we'll do one deleted scene. Maybe I don't do trivia other. after. Oh yeah, we'll do. Yeah, far so much going on today. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Katie, there's please. another point for it being before the second fight. Just okay, now, yeah. Mickey yeah. said, "I'm gonna watch you make good." 
Oh, like it. Yeah, which is not really like, I don't think he expected Rocky to win that. I think he thought Rocky could beat Apollo, but I don't think that's what he says to the Stitch Man. That's what he said to the Stitch Man. Yeah. Like, we we got got a winner here. We got a winner here. You know, or something. But he's saying, you're going to make good on the fight now. You're going to win this one. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And there's just no way this gift coming up, there's no indication that Rocky won first Rocky film. Mickey would have given this gift. At that point, he was just focused on the fact they were elated enough that I got a chance to be in the ring for a championship fight. I don't think Mickey on the second fight after the coma. This is the, all this part right here is after the coma. Adrian's awake. They're in a good headspace. They're training. This gift was given after you know the win speech. This wasn't done pre win speech, right? So. Oh, Mickey. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Really, I don't need nothing. <laughs> Look at that. See that? This is the favorite thing that I have on this earth. And Rocky Marciano, give me that. You know what it was? His cufflink. Huh? And now I'm giving it to you. And it, it's got to be like a, like an angel on your shoulder. See? <clears throat> and if you ever get hurt and you feel that you're going down, this little angel is going to whisper in your ear. He's going to say, Get up, you son of a bitch! Mickey loves you. Okay. Incredible acting by Burgess, even in his senior year, you know, of life. They're amazing. And, uh, it's channels... one of the best scenes he's ever done in, in, the, yeah. in the Rocky films. I'm not saying in like uh, movies in general, but sure, I, he's done so many stuff. But yeah, no matter who you are in the Rocky franchise, fandom. I don't think there's one fan who doesn't say that this scene alone is one of the best scenes in the franchise. That's where everyone, that's the Venn diagram there. Everyone loves that moment of Mickey when he gives the cufflink to Rocky and it's very subtle, but it's in the musical cue. You hear it. This is where music so powerful. And he says, and I'm giving it to you. And he gives that thumbs up and that musical swell happens. It's amazing. It's, it's subtle, but it's there. It hits the heartstrings. It's very emotional. Yeah. You're a sociopath if, if that doesn't get to you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, honestly, yeah. I get choked up when I, when I watch that scene, for sure. Sure. It's beautiful. Uh, of course, Rocky, like every grown man and woman, uh, is now crying, uh, remembering that moment, remembering a time where life was good. He had his mentor, his father figure, a gift that he held dear throughout his life, and he's in the gym where all this happened. Of course, he's just – and, of course, what's happened in his life – this is a very emotionally withdrawn and down and out uh, Rocky. He's just not feeling sorry for himself, but definitely a combination of he's at rock bottom again. And he's like, I he got hit by here. a train. Yeah. Basically, that came out of nowhere and turned his life completely around. If this happened to anybody, you'd be doing all this shit or worse. Yeah. Well, we talked about this losing your life, income, house. Yeah, it's scary. If I lost all my retirement savings in my house and I, I had to move my kids into like a low rent area and in my 40s, I would be hurting pretty bad. It'd be yeah. looking at my life. So, yeah, I totally get it. I don't look down to Rocky at all. I love you too. Here you go. I love you too. Go after him, kid. You was each. Mm. Beautiful scene, obviously. Oh, there it is. What happened to his other cufflink? I don't know. He only gave me one. <laughs> he gave it to some bum. I love that yeah. Apollo's wearing it. That's like, it, honestly, if you ever have a chance to talk to Sly or oh, to a- ask a question through that person you know, that has to be put to bed for good. Because we know Rocky Marciano gave that link, cufflink, to Mickey. So Mickey's in the industry. He's a trainer. So cool. And then you're right. We talked about the age problem because Apollo is a little bit older than Rocky, but Tony was a boxer and Tony raised Apollo. It both may be metaphoric. He was basically yeah. The, yeah. the Mickey figure to, yeah. to Apollo. It kind of makes sense in this weird, like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker type lore of the Rocky universe where both of these fighters have their respective cufflinks from their trainer yes. when Rocky Marciano dished them out. I basically just want to believe that. I want to believe that. Even though it's like that's not the most plausible explanation, it is possible. And it would be cool if that was the case. So I'm like, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just choose to believe that. (laughs) 
why does Sly write that then? That's my question. So what was his idea when he writes that and they acted out? Yeah. What is he saying the character is saying that? What is Mickey saying? Because the idea that he says, oh, I don't know if some bum. Why write that if it's some inconsequential person? Or maybe it was to some inconsequential person. I think the idea, the joke is the some bum is your nemesis, Apollo. I see what you're saying. And the reason I don't agree is I don't feel like there's evidence that Sly thinks that way. For example, I thought for sure him proposing to Adrian at the zoo was yeah. a, was an homage, to inside joke to the previous film, the one that was done just like three years ago. And then we found out through you that he didn't even think of that, right? And so the idea that Apollo happens to be wearing this cufflink from three movies ago and, and Sly thinks to put that, insert that in there, to me, he could have. It, it is possible, but it's a bit of a stretch for me. I, I just don't buy it. I don't know why Sly wrote that in there. It, Rocky's like that. Like, Rocky would ask, where'd the other cufflink go? Like, that's just kind of more his personality and his curiosities. To me, that's a more likely explanation. I hear you. And I'm a, to say that, yes, yeah, Sly, he may not have remembered. That's the thing, too. Like, even him telling the person that told me what his answer, he may have just forgotten, too, because yeah. it's been three decades. Like, mm-hmm. he says that now. Like, I don't know. We just like the zoo. Because that's what he said. We like the zoo. It's a good location, filming location. So we wrote that part in to propose at the zoo. You're right. But he, the fact that he forgot the big line of, you know, take her to the zoo. Uh, but I'm just saying, Sly, now, this is 1990. It's 11 years since part two had come out. I agree. That's still a long time. But the idea that Sly says, I, he's sitting, okay, so Rocky asks question to Mickey. The answer that Mickey's going to give is, I don't know, he gave it to some bum. Now, you're right. It could just be Mickey being Mickey. Like, it's inconsequential. It's just some bum had it. So you're right. That is a logical, that can stand up in court. You know, we don't have any evidence. Well, the only evidence we have, I guess, is what we're saying. The problem is the evidence we have is that Apollo slash Carl Weathers as a prop wore the very same. When the prop department gave this cufflink to Rocky to wear, it just so happens it's identical to the one that Apollo wears in part two. So that's another piece of evidence where had they forgotten that Apollo wore a boxer's cufflink in part two, they could have easily gotten a silver one, uh, a black one. But the fact that it's the same color and design as the one that Apollo wore 11 years earlier, someone in the prop department got the same. Like, that's a piece of evidence for that dialogue. Why are they the same looking? What are the They're boxers? Doing? So they have like a boxing cuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I bet a lot like, of boxers have that same one. Yeah. I was yeah. going the same way. Or like the golden gloves. But I am going with. Yes. He picks and chooses his genius moments. And I'm, I, I choose, so. I, think, I, I think choose to believe. Is that the other cuff link was given to Tony or somebody gave it to Tony and then Tony gave it to Apollo. I think it's just like we're seeing now. I think it's yeah. Rocky yeah. Marciano gave it to Mick. Rocky Marciano gave it to Tony. Both mm-hmm. trainers give it to their fighters. Yep. I love it. I wish that I wish that's true. And, and it could be, it, <laughs> it could, could be. be, you know what I mean? It could be. This is the beauty because we don't yeah. have any evidence for or against. Yeah. There's the, you get to fan fiction this. You yeah. actually yeah. get to without it wrecking the story. You, you can fan fiction it without changing the universe. That's the beauty of that scenario. Yeah. Okay, I want to show my thing here. Yeah, this is the time to do it. All right, this listeners, is this is between forward. Custom Auto and Mike Tyson, and this happened prior to the Rocky film coming out. Yep. Like, Custom Auto died, I think, in 1986. He died right before Mike Tyson became champ. But this is when, right. not long before he died, and Mike Tyson was on his way to becoming champ. Mostly, it just changed my life because he helped me to deal with people. I know how to deal with people now. Before, I just couldn't, I couldn't talk to people. I used to always want to be alone, I, and now I learned how to deal with anyone. I could talk to anyone, even about their problems. And it's like a father and son relationship. You know, even though he is my manager and trainer, sometimes I forget that because of the way we are. The that- first day he even met me, the first day he met me, he took me in his house. He didn't even know me. I can say honestly, I have a very deep affection for him. I do. To me, he's my boy. He's with me. But I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot, and he doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. If he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing and doing as well as as he's doing and improving as he has gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. Because I believe that a person dies when they no longer wants to live. But I have a reason with, with Mike here. And he gives me the motivation. I will stay alive and I will watch him become a success. Because I will not leave until that happens. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. And I like what I love is that 
to Sly's credit, there was already the father son relationship with Rocky making before Tyson had this. But then Rocky, sorry, Sly sees this. He goes, "Man, that is good stuff," mm-hmm. and uh, he's able to dramatize that dialogue almost verbatim. It's it's pretty cool to almost immortalize that relationship. And it's funny too because Customato brought Tyson into his home the same way Rocky brought <laughs> Mickey into his home. It's kind of yeah. the idea. Oh no, you Tommy though. It's yeah. Then, then, then it happens again yeah. with Tommy. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, as well. but the, the, sorry, go ahead, please. Tommy is Mike Tyson. In a lot yep. of ways, he's like yep. comes from a troubled home. He's kind of unstable. He's yeah. just a fighter that knocks the shit out of everybody, but like, is trouble in a way. And like when Customato died, it was no longer there to guide Tyson. Tyson really went off the rails. Big he time. did. And I know it sucks. I was just thinking the same thing because you're talking about the timeline when when uh, when he passed away. It's too bad that he wasn't 20 years younger. <laughs> yeah. You know, that he could have been with Ty. I like to think that Tyson probably wouldn't have gotten the trouble. If Don King wasn't alive or around. Like, imagine if he was protected from Don. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like Don King is obviously Duke. George and Washington. It's like Sly just, he just takes from reality, like from current events. And, you know, he's obviously doing that with Rocky Five. There is more custom auto to come in future episodes. Ooh. This is not the only custom auto quote that's used in Rocky Five. So <laughs> I love it. Wow. I love it. That's great. Great tease. Fantastic footage. And I, I know you're not saying that uh I mean obviously there's no uh there's no question Sly so used that uh that piece of dialogue there. He used that for his motivation for that uh I was um, almost expecting Cus to say motivation. <laughs> like it was sounded wrong when he said motivation. I'm like, I'm actually, Cus, it is motiv- motivation. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. And but it also goes to show you the power of acting, soundtrack, editing. Because as cool as that was to see that, and it's really cool to see that real life connection and love. It's funny when you see it dramatized. That's when you get all choked up. You know, it's it's funny how much a score. Oh yeah, and Mickey putting his thumbs up and talking. You still have that history of the Rocky and Mickey character, and by the time you watch that fifth film, or it's it wouldn't hit. You would have to know the first three films to feel affected by that scene in the fifth film. Seeing it cold, I don't know how many people would be moved by it. You'd have to know the relationship from the first three films. Yeah, quickly we'll see what the deleted scene is. I think it happens right after, and then we'll end it with trivia. We got to do one work print scene, <laughs> but there is one scene coming up. So as we know, it's going to segue into the uh, hip hop version of Take You Back. The original cut or the work print cut actually still uses the old version. Just oh, FYI, because okay. there's going to be a scene that comes up. You'll see it. it's very quick, but it's actually a very. I don't know why they didn't keep it. Yeah, and I'll just let it play for itself. So just watch. And the bring is not a cold school of hard knocks is my own. That's it. So for our listeners who don't watch this on YouTube, which I can't recommend enough, it was Robert coming out of the house to help move. Bo- He's moving boxes in and out of the truck to the house. We see him walking back out of the house. And the crowd that's there cheering on Rocky, welcome back to the neighborhood. There's a bunch of kids throwing punches and pushing and shoving Robert as he's going back to the truck. That's a good foreshadowing for what's going to happen to him in school. You see that Robert's not in his environment. This almost reminds me of like you, you see in a movie when someone goes to prison and they're kind of like they're walking through the cell block to their cell and they're kind of getting hazed by all the other inmates and like taunted and stuff. Fresh this kind of reminds me of like him walking down that sidewalk and people are like pushing at him and giving him shit. Great point. I was just going to say that I loved the little line that Polly says too, because there's a crowd around it and he's like, hey, why don't you guys go find some other accident? No, I love I it. Good, good catch though. Good catch. Yeah. Next episode, here's a tease. I think the next episode that we do, I think it's it's back to back deleted scenes. It's long. There's a scene that Rocky has with his son Robert after the moving in scene. He goes down to his room in the basement, talks to him. And then there's one that Rocky and Adrian have together where Rocky is shirtless. And Donald actually brought up a very good point. Fun fact that deleted scene for next episode, there was a love scene that we're gonna see that kicks in where Adrian was supposed to get pregnant. Because what was supposed to happen was, is that in the script, she did get pregnant from that scene because it was going to be a girl. And that's when Rocky was going to die in the ambulance ride 
after the street fight, knowing that the legacy of Rocky was still going to continue with the daughter and Adrian. That was in the script, the original Rocky Five script. So, so they took it out completely. But in that sequence, before they uh, make make out on the bed a little bit, Sly is shirtless for a good chunk of time. You get to see. You're gonna have to wait. Uh, he looks great. He it's actually one of his better builds in his career. He, I wish we saw more of that type of build because it's thin ish, but bulky at the same time. It's a nice, it's a nice look. Okay, well, let's play some trivia. So, okay, here we go. This one's I already know I'm not gonna get a perfect score on this. I'm telling you right now. What colors were Tommy's shorts during the first fight with Rocky training him? Uh, how many years has Jewel been living in Philly? Man, Next this one. Is bad. Yeah. Where, yeah. Five is guys, bad for me. I, I don't know five very well. Where does Polly want to go on vacation? Oh, uh, yeah. I remember this. Oh, fuck. What? Oh. Why can I not think of anything today? Katie, we talked about this. Oh, shit. <laughs> no more hints to her mental brain. She doesn't need them. <laughs> well, because now I'm confusing it with he says something in one of the earlier movies. Or is that in this movie that I'm confusing it? I have a country, but it's probably wrong. How much money does Paulie want to get for the cup that Rocky drinks out of? <laughs> he's remember he's hawking wear at the gym, M- memorabilia stuff. I think I'm gonna get every single one of these wrong. <laughs> I, I, I think I might get one or two out of five. <laughs> this is the hardest five. And I remember how much done. he settles for for that mug. Oh wow, that's good. But I don't, I don't remember, remember the asking price. It, it, okay, sorry. Is that question how much does he want or how much does, it, will, does he take? Let's see how much does he want. To get okay, food. I'm gonna write down how much he took just in okay. like okay. And- Whose mother does Rocky see when he's walking Robert to school? No <laughs> way. I have this one. Are the you only reason serious? I have this one, I was piecing together the Rocky cut with the original. So I got to see this because I have to go back and forth. It's quite the process. Yeah, I don't right. remember his name. So he used to use his head as a punching bag. That's right. You that's the line. Good. But it's yeah, somebody's remember, mother. Everything's I, but the is it name. a name or is it like a yes. nickname? Keep thinking Dipper, but it's clearly not it. <laughs> Dipper's <All right>. mom. <laughs> well, she's black. I'll give you, I'll give you that. Okay. All right, so uh, let's start with... Let's God. Start with, <laughs> thanks, Rocco. I, I officially think I'm getting one out of five here. I might not I'll, get I'll any be one. happy to get two, but... I don't think I'm going to get any of them. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ, this is the most difficult series of five questions we've done. This is the worst Shorts, four we've all had. I Shorts? picked a color, but if it's the other one that I chose, I'm going to be really pissed. Okay, I said gray. Gray's not bad. I picked white and blue. Yeah, that's what I picked, too. I'm envisioning a training sequence. Yeah. Blue and white, Kyle. Fuck me. Fuck yeah. God damn it. How many years has Jewel been living in Philly? Kyle, do you have an I put eight. I put four. Okay, I picked eight as well. Six. Oh. We split six the difference. Six was my first choice. Yeah. I, I changed my mind. Oh, I'm mad at myself for that. Okay. Where I, does Polly want to go on vacation? Miami need, need more gigolos? You know what? I couldn't remember, so... I thought I, that was like from an earlier movie, though. I was, yeah. I got Jamaica because of the stupid Rocky Balboa. Yeah, he looks Jamaican. I know yeah. as a like, he didn't use Jamaica oh. twice, did he? Mm-hmm. But I couldn't remember that country. That in Europe. Like, oh, he, Rocky thought Jamaica was in Europe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, you guys. I got one. I got one. Is it Miami though? Yeah. Let me uh, verify oh, your Sheila's. answer, Katie. Before you get too excited. Sorry. Yeah, it's Miami. You're right. Okay. Did you put Miami, Katie? I did. And okay, yeah, because remember when you went to Miami, I texted yeah. you. I'm like, they need gigolos. Gigolos. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's not fair. You guys, this is a couple questions you guys got. No, but I would have gotten that no matter what, because I I knew that scene, Miami and the gigolos, but for some reason in my right. head, that was in a different movie. How much money does Polly want to get for the cup that Rocky Fuck. drinks out of? I put five dollars. So he did I. He took five. He took five. Oh, the he guy. Took five. I negotiated him down to five, so I put ten. I think it's like ten or twenty or something like that. I was gonna put ten, but I put five. If if, if the answer is five, I'm gonna ask for a video review. Okay, it was a vague. He says how much? Okay, so Kyle, I need a final answer. Uh, I will fight it if it's not five or if if it's five because he took five. I put ten bucks. Kyle, you got it right. It's ten dollars. Yeah. Well, because he technically he did say how much but does he want. That, that's how I answered yeah. the question. I that's why I asked. Really. I asked. I said, like, is it how much yeah. he took for it or how much did he ask? And those are two. And that's how numbers. I answered it. So I got it wrong. I answered it with how he wrote. He goes, How much money does Paulie want to get for the cup? Now how much did he settle for? So he wanted ten bucks, he got five. Yeah. Okay. 
he's like, how the guy's like, how do I know it's actually Rocky? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's his teeth marks on it or something. Some bullshit. God damn it. Okay, what's <laughs> what's the last one? Hey, Rocky, I'm Bubba's mom. Is it Bubba? Yes, yeah. Bubba's uh, mom. I put like it, Jimmy. It was just like a shot. I put dog, Joey. Maybe. I put Joey. Because I was, I, Bubba is not a real name. I said, is it a nickname or is it a name? Yeah, whatever. It's a name, Bubba. Bob, and Bubba, you said Bubba. name. Bubba's not a name. It's Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. Oh, would you have put Bubba if I said no? Nickname? No, okay, I'm just right. saying. I I was trying. Ryan, to think how many of, did you get, buddy? God two, damn it. just two. Fucking Katie, one. Did you get any? One, one Miami. I got Miami. Oh, that's, that's right. Okay. I remember Miami. I'm surprised I got the Tommy colors. That was oh, okay. A so, so Kyle, uh, did you get how many? Did you get? I got three. Surprisingly, got three, yeah. So I'm now two behind Katie overall in trivia. Wow. Like she has wow. 181. I have 179. You're going to pass me five. I don't know. Well, well, but then there's Rocky yet. Balboa though. Like there's still, cause I don't True. think I'm any better at Rocky Balboa than you are. So I'm basically union Kane at this point. <laughs> 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 That's all right. I just play to have fun. I uh, yeah. I would love I would love to win, but no. Nah. Like, well, we don't even know what we're playing for. Bragging rights. I think it's just bragging rights. Yeah. I love. Okay, no, that's fine. That's good. Those are great questions. I love it. Thanks, Rocco. Those are great. That was fun. Baba's mom. I can't believe it. she said Baba. Like I, yeah, I believe you. I'm not fighting it, but in like my mind, I'm like I. I thought I would have remembered that, but right. I same. guess not. Like yeah. No, I, it's funny. I just edited that scene. Like. It's in this video file that we haven't got to yet. It's coming up. But okay, well, uh, that was it. That was a lot of fun. Great to have you guys back. Again, I want to say thanks to Moody and Groove for filling in for last uh, episode. They did a great job. And of course, if anyone can't make an episode, that's what I'll try to do is get those guest hosts in uh, from different shows. The uh, people who do listen and enjoy our show, it's nice to get a, to have a third chair, so to speak. So it's always good. But with that, this episode is over. I didn't hear no bell. I just want to say-